Greetings, I'm Doug Grove, and uh, for this uh, section of the book talk in the class, we're going to talk a little bit about the seven steps towards improving community. As you remember, in the last uh, video that we talked about, the seven steps had to deal with looking at a school that was working on curriculum. And for this example, we're going to go to uh, page 168 in the book and take a look at the scenario with the school that looked at improving something in the community area of the four C's. And again, remember we have these seven steps. We start with step one, asking the right questions. Uh, step two, we move into collecting and organizing the data. Then in step three, we go into discussing and reflecting on that data. Step four, we set the goals and do our target planning. In step five, we actually implement. That's where we do the, you know, we roll up our sleeves and get to the, to the work. In step six, we want to go back and monitor, maybe fine tune our goals or our implementation strategies. And then in step seven, we want to evaluate, and we also want to make sure that we're going to communicate those outcomes. We want to look back and see how did we really do. So for this, this example on community, let's take a look at the questions that this school asks specifically on page 168. They ask four different questions. Number one, are we engaging our parents in a way that they can help us academically? Question two, what activities are we doing to get them more involved, specifically the parents? Question three, are we communicating effectively to the parents of the community how they can uh, best help us? And question four, what strategies or avenues can we take to improve what we do? from the office to the classroom. So these were the four overarching questions that this group asked to begin with. And in this example specifically, when they moved into uh, collecting and organizing data, they had already collected the multi-dimensional data again in the spring, like the last example that we did in, in uh, curriculum. And this group looked at that data. The data was pretty negative for this uh, school. And what they decided to do was not necessarily look at that data, but do the walkthrough. So the building level team, which was comprised of a, of a couple uh, lead teachers and the assistant principal and the principal, they provided the walkthroughs for the faculty. The building level team did the walkthrough as well in community. The building level team took all of that data, put it into a PowerPoint that was going to be shared at a three-hour training session with the faculty to specifically address how they were going to go about improving uh, the community at the school. So once that presentation took place, they moved into step three. And I think it's worth noting in step three, if we uh, take a look in the book at page uh, 172, there's some specific strengths and weaknesses that came out of that step three in that discussion. Those were, the basic concerns were that parents do not feel welcome in the school and state that the teachers rarely communicate with them. Uh, teachers feel uh, they do not have enough time to deal with parents. Uh, the community engagement activities rarely attract enough parents or families because they are held at times convenient for not held at times that are not convenient for parents. Uh, there was two strengths identified there. The leadership team is doing a good job getting businesses and individuals to contribute to fundraising activities, and uh, students like the events being held and like to have their parents come to school. So there were some positive things going on, but obviously some negative things that they could certainly focus on. They moved into step four. As I mentioned, they had a three-hour training. Uh, they worked through some of these things. In this instance, though, at the end of the three hours, there really was no agreement between the faculty and the building level team on what should really be the focus. They couldn't really come to any consensus. Uh, what the building level team decided to do at that point is really focus on two things. They decided that they would focus on getting more parents into tutor after school, and they would focus on improving and increasing the amount of recruitment of parents who could come and work at the cleanup days at school. So there's really were two different goals, and both of those, as you can tell, were based on getting parents to you know more or less do more work at the school. Uh, that implementation took place. When they moved to step six, the monitoring and fine-tuning, there was really little monitoring or fine-tuning to do, given this example. I mean, quite honestly, the number of students that, number of parents that participated more in tutoring, and the number of parents that showed up to do cleanup days, those are pretty much your monitoring 
uh, numbers, if you would. So what happened after step six was they did do a reevaluation in step seven. They went through the walkthroughs again, and unfortunately, there was very little change. And in many instances, there was even more of a disconnect noted between the parents uh, that wanted to be involved in school and the ability for the school to allow those parents to be involved. So you might be wondering why would we give you a, you know, a negative example. Uh, and actually this example does turn out better, but one of the things that's important to understand from this example is that there was a lack of consensus. And that's a real problem if we're working as a building level team to build consensus and get everybody uh, on board the same idea. That lack of consensus really resulted in the building level team making the decision on what would be the community involvement areas that the school would focus on. A second thing is really the distinction between first order and second order change that you remember from back earlier in the book. This first order change of just getting parents to come out and to tutor or to come out and clean up trash, those are really first order change ideas. Those are little small things that parents can do. There wasn't really a concerted effort to make parents feel more attached to the school, to come up with better ways to involve the parents that didn't necessarily just involve the parent doing something. We really want the parent to be a part of the school and to take on some of the ideas that we come up with that can help them better engage with their students or be at other functions that don't necessarily just involve them working on school uh, things. So this example did turn out better. It took a year for this school to come around and say, you know what, we can't just count on parents being better tutors or parents being at the cleanup. The school in the second year began to look at bigger and broader things that would make those parents feel more attached to the school and also allow those parents to take things home that they could interact with the student on. So the result is that, you know, sometimes it might take a little time for us to realize that the changes that we proposed in the beginning were not the right changes to really help us improve the CFP.